All right, I'm going to do a fly time video. So you non-fly tires, don't panic. Don't click away. Hold on. On the end of the video, I have some information on how I rig set up to fish fish nips. So there's some there's some fishing information on the end of the video. So if you need to, just fast forward to the end of it and take a look at that. But please leave a like, hit the like button, leave a comment, share it amongst your buddies. Our fly time videos are not all that popular. And then this one, because people asked for it, we're going to... Nice little shark tree's head. You can see the rubber legs wiggling with my mess in the background. And uh, so we're going to do that rubber legged stone fly that a lot of people have been asking for. Here again, you ask, we try to do it. Here's the um, rubber legged stone fly. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find the fishing information on the end of it useful. Um, yeah, please hit the like button and leave a comment. We need to help. So enjoy the video. Hope it's useful. All right, we're going to tie the um, rubber legged. Um, Stonefly. This one's kind of jazzed up, and I do use this quite a bit with the hot beads, the rubber legs, and the flashback. But here's I'm going to show the uh, rubber legs. Well, anyways, uh, for a hook, I'm using a uh, Daiichi uh, 1120 size six. You can do eights, works great, but I like the six for this pattern. The beads, you can see the three colored beads here. I got the copper, the chartreuse, the cherise. For the beads, kind of a medium bead, whatever will fit onto your hook comfortably is the size of the bead you should use. The uh, for rubber legs, obviously, I got um, some round um, white medium uh, rubber legs, seems to work ideal. Dubbing, I'm um, a big fan of the uh, hairline UV black dub, that's great. Goose by it's um, black, however, you can substitute if you want with some other colors like white or even match the bead head with the tail so they, like chartreuse or orange I've been known to do that the wire obviously I got copper kind of an orangish wine reddish color chartreuse the v-rib this is a medium v-rib black that I use for the body and obviously I'm going to tie it with um, black thread I use a little peacock and this is the flashback kind of a pertilistic flashback those are the materials that I use for this fly pattern. All right, let's get on with tying the fly. All right, let's try to tie this um, rubber-legged flashbacky thing, work with the rubber legs to the best of my abilities. Here we go. Now to save time, I've already preloaded a um, bead onto this thing. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use this uni um, black 6 aught thread. Now what you've noticed is I've already got the bead behind where I'm tying in the thread. Because what I want to do is put on the uh, first set of rubber legs. Now I've already cut these things to length. I'll let you experiment with what length you want. But I recommend within doubt just run them a little bit long. I'm just going to kind of loop it over a couple of turns. Fold it over flat, a couple of pinch wraps, then I'll just kind of secure it in there pretty good. Coming to back, um, I'm going to do a hand whip finish a few turns just to tie it off because I do a, I'm going to tie off, slide the bead, just kind of got to bully it over it. There you go. And now you got the um, rubber legs underneath the bead coming out. I imagine there's other techniques to do this. This just happens to be my way. Now I'll just retie in. And I'm going to put on goose by it uh, legs on this thing. So I'll just kind of come down to about where I want. Usually right around where the barb is. The I hang the thread down. It comes right around with the barb. That's usually where I start stop my flies. Make a little bit of a bump. Come back. Grab some goose by it. So now in the back of the tail I'll go on to the bottom of the bias with a little flatter, and I'll get two. And they got a natural curve to them, so I like to run the curve curve up. And I tie them in one at a time, and I try to try them a little bit spread or opposing or whatever the fancy term is. Just I don't worry about how far spread out there. I just want some spread. I'll come back to that bump. Just tie back onto it, onto the bump a little bit. 
Uh, come back up, secure the body best I can. And now for the body, whoops, getting ahead of myself. What I want to do first is put in the rip. This is medium copper wire. I'm going to use the copper today because it's what's available. Um, like I probably said a couple times earlier, if you want, you can supplement the um, bead to a different color, the bias to a different color, and a wire to a different color, and jazz these things up. When you steelhead fishing, a little bit of bling never hurts. This is a medium um, V rib, vinyl rib. I'm going to put the curved side into the body or up against the hook, come down to where I want to stop and start, and I'll secure that with a few good turns. Come back up. Now, when I fold it over, I'll have the round side up. And we'll butt wrap that to the best of my abilities. There we go. Now, you're dealing with a stretchy material. And you don't want to pull it too tight because it always wants to come back to its original size. So I just do it moderately snug, secure it, nip it off, and then come back through the same direction and kind of let that wire fall into the valley that the V-rib made. And that gives us that nice stripe um, effect. Now, some of you probably already noticed that I went way past um, the uh, center mark. There's, I preach this in all my fly tying with nymphs. The laws of physics and nymph tying state or proportion state two thirds, one third. Reality is, if we go for 50 50, the proportions always come out correctly one third, two thirds. So, the other thing I like to do is I like to go past the halfway mark, then come back up to the center of the fly, the halfway part, and then that way, this is my um, flashback material, a wing case. You can put the wing case onto the body size and you get a better wing case. You get a smoother transition, you don't get a little valley, they don't end up really small, goofy little wing cases, they pull over good and they look nice. Now at this point, we're going to go back and add the, the rest of the little rubber legs. And I'm going to tie the one on this side. And I've had a fly tie-in mishap. I dropped some material, so I'm going to pause the camera and come back to tie-in. There, we come back to our normally scheduled program of tying the nymph. And I got another um, little rubber leg thing. I just kind of lay them along the side. And I just tie them down a little bit in front, go down along the side here, just spread down a little bit, and that gives a little bit of a spread. And just take your fingernails and fingers and whatever, manhandle them into the position you want them at, like that. So now, we go to this stuff, this um, UV black dubbing. I'll grab a batch. Uh, I get a good, pretty good wad here, and this is. Don't worry if you're a good dubber or not, because I do a real sloppy job of it. I'll put it on a little tight, then I'll just kind of make a mess, secure it again. Here, so, so you can see this is what I got. It's not the most prettiest job of dubbing, but I don't want it to be. I want it to be kind of loose and fluffy. So I'll make a big ball to a turn behind the legs here to help stand them up. Pull the legs back, make a couple turns in front. There we go. Fold the wing case over. I kind of come with my fingers, get everything out of the way, and secure it. A couple turns. Meanwhile, the nice thing about this stuff is I can wiggle it around, make sure everything is standing up. The wing case is, turn it to you can see it a little bit, is right where I want it. I'll kind of square it away. And there we go. Now I'm going to come back, and on the originals, I have a couple of biots you can see here for the wing. I'm going to come back and get the bite things. And I'm going to do is, I want them a little smaller. So in this case, I took the tail off the back end. I'm going to go to the front end and grab a couple. They're a little thinner, so a little bit more petite, which makes for great um, wings or horns or whatever you want to call it off the back here. Get that secured. They're going to stick up a little bit funny, so what? Um, we can fix that when we groom the fly. 
and kind of tangled up tying at a funky angle here there we go they look a little bit weird that's okay gonna clean them up a little bit come back with everything get the legs make sure the little wing horns are out of the way and kind of secure it a little bit with a few turns at this point I'm kind of tying the fly down making sure the wing case is good these things are sticking up in the right direction which is good they're a little bit wild this one's off to the front here there we go you can get in here with your fingernail and just put it where you want it there we go I tell everybody you're bigger than the fly than, than the materials just get in there and tell it where it's gonna go now we're gonna do a collar on this thing and we're gonna use peacock I usually use two or three fairly fluffy right now I'm working through some strong um, some strong peacock and I th think the stuff's old enough to vote so I use in two or three I'll clip off the ends because like I said it's old and brittle and it breaks anyways so I'll come in right behind the get my thread behind the um, there we go come in behind the eye catch it a couple of turns get the rubber legs out of the way secure it and then I just kinda this little leg is misbehaving there we got it back oops there we are like I said we got a lot of going on here two now how many turns until it looks right that looks right get in here with my fingernail make sure it's all tucked in come in one turn two turn three turn four turns that'll hold it for now clean it up I got a little few stubs in there I'm not gonna worry about and I'm gonna worry about it there we go and whip finish off the fly I usually try to get five or six good turns in there with the whip finish tool because I don't head cement these that not knots usually tied right behind tucked in behind the bead and it's pretty secure back in there make a quick camera adjustment folks bear with me now that's kind of rough there we go and here we are yeah, it looks a little unkept, but that's all right. We can get in here and just kind of move it. Now, the other thing you can do, if you want, and I do this sometimes, I get in here with this loose dubbing and pick this dubbing out and kind of groom it around. And that can add a little bit of volume there. makes it look a little bit like legs. Clean it up a little bit. And there's my rubber-legged flashback stone fly that I use for... A lot of um, steelhead fishing. The salmon will eat this, Chinooks will eat this too. You get Chinooks in the fall that are really crabby and picky and the water's a little warm and they, they're just kind of sitting in the pockets. Great option. Uh, spring, late winter, early spring steelhead love stoneflies. I don't know what there is about white rubber legs and stoneflies, but there you go. This is winter, uh, one of my late winter patterns done with rubber legs. And a little bit of flash and obviously we can do different colors with the beads and the wires and the biats okay I'm gonna show how I um, rig up an inf rig and some of the different leaders and setups that I do for this and just go over it. it's pretty simple pretty straightforward zoom out here a little bit so I got some room to work and just a camera there we go get this out of the way who needs to see garbage in the way well, anyways, um, for different tippets that I use, I don't know, 10 pound, what are we doing with that? We don't use 10 pound for nymph fishing. Too stiff. So very often, I'll start out with 8 pound, 6 pound, some of the other types of um, tippet material, that's Seaguar. I'm a big fan of um, uh, Very Voss. This is some 5X. I don't usually use 5X, maybe 4X for steelhead fishing. However, I have been in some situations on low water cranky fish where 5X was appropriate. But usually the problem with that, with anything lighter than 4X, a good shake of the fish's head and the fish in the fly is gone. We do work off from 
nine foot leaders and here's one of my hand tied nine foot nine ten foot ish leader we'll, we'll work off on that off a of floating um, fly line and yeah we use a variety of um, I got a variety of indicators here here's an airlock um, some of the thing about bobbers we're all familiar with and you'll see in the videos quite often we're using these raven floats uh, this is a 2.2 grammar and this is a 3.8 grammar and we'll put the tubes what I like about them is we can put the two cut a little quarter inch uh, tubing for a top and a quarter inch on the bottom and run it right onto our leader and they don't beat the leaders up like the uh, thing bobbers do the airlocks are really nice on the leaders and I use that when I'm fishing shallow water and and fishing a little lighter but when I'm fishing deep water heavy water I prefer these things because they're just tough they're durable I can mend to them hard and knock the float around a little bit and not knock the fly off the fly off track so it's just whatever works for you here's some more thing my bobbers right here some smaller ones that we use on the trout streams and obviously with um, fishing uh, nymphs you got to be on or near the bottom so it's a constant weight adjustment so we definitely use some weight so your tippet size has a lot to do with uh, the size of your nymph the uh, for an example this is a size 6 and for steelhead fishing I'll try to get away with 8 some 8 pound seaguar or I'll go to 6 pound seaguar which is basically like 3x or 4x is usually what I'm running for you X people now how I tie it on is obviously here's the tippet and then about 30 inches away I got my uni knot you can probably see that and get that in the camera and then I can add my weight and then it goes to the leader and this, I like about 36 inches to 24 inches if I'm fishing a creek small water tight little pockets and slots I may have to go a little shorter from the shot to the fly but I don't like to go any more than about 24 inches I, I prefer about 30 inches and since a lot of my steelhead nymphs as you'll notice over time have a bead or a thin body it helps get them down I can get away with keeping the shot a little bit further away from the fish now the this the whole idea of the split shot is how much I use you're gonna have to experiment I want to make add periodic gentle contact in the bottom through the drift so that takes some experiment some messing around but the nice thing about the bigger indicators is we can drive the fly down a little quicker we want then suspend everything with the float yes it's a float yes I did take it from the center pinner guys but hey if it works why not and even the shallow water you can do the same thing with the thing with bobbers like a lot of my creek fishing so then we can just kind of keep it out of the weeds we can keep it out of the crud and we can get a nice soft drift with a nymph which is they want it. and that allows these rubber legs and all the dubbing and everything to come alive and make the bug look alive so that's basically how I do it I run a quick recap running off a floating fly line here's a, about a 10 foot leader I run about 30 inches of tippet to the fly from the weight so there's about 30 inches in between there then this goes to your regular um, leader uh, various floats and I like to fish no heavier than about 8 pound when I'm nymph fishing so I'm going 8 pound 6 pound for you X folks that's kind of like 2x um, 4x in there is what I'm running so or even 3x yeah that yeah excuse me 2x is like 10 pounds so it'll be like 3x 4x in there is usually what I like to run for for the trout fishermen we're used to running the X line so that's my setup that's how I rig it pretty straightforward the biggest thing is line handling skills depth control and um, just being precise where you want to put it because even in some of the bigger rivers those fish are going to get into feeding lanes and those feeding lanes could be two or three feet wide so you want to be really precise about getting your fly down through the, into the feeding lane that's what the indicators come into um, in the play and obviously you hear me in the videos quite often refer to these things as drift management devices exactly I want to get that fl this fly in a precise spot on a precise drift line because I know where the fish are sitting feeding and where all the foods getting funneled so that's my setup this is Jay at JPEC guides and Lost River Fishing we are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service we fish the Lake Ontario tributaries and then during the spring and the summer we also fish the inland trout streams classic dry fly fishing during the heat of the summer we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike if you're interested in any of our outings or have any questions please feel free to email us at 
fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.